video, we'll learn how to use cues in LabVIEW. There are different mechanisms to pass the data from one place to another, and cues is one of those mechanisms. First of all, we'll go to the new and get the producer consumer loop events design pattern, which uses the cues. So if you look into this one, what you can see is we're using the queue mechanism to pass the data from one loop to another. The producer loop sends the data whenever the event is being triggered and will be receiving the data on the consumer loop. Uh, this design pattern at the moment is configured to use the string as the data. So when we, I press NQ, I'll get send the element a string and I'll receive in the consumer loop. Now what I'll do is I'll move the consumer loop into the right hand side to demonstrate how to effectively use the queues. First of all, I get the writer into the left hand side, that is my producer loop. And I'll have my consumer loop as a reader. So whenever I trigger the event by pressing the end key element, the element string is sent through the queues in the memory and the data will be received on the other side. The another way you can compare the queues is queues basically has got a buffer built in which follows the first in first out methodology. That means every time I send the data, the data will not be lost. If I send like a four or five data at the same time, they will follow the queue mechanism. That means the first data that was written into the queue will be read first. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to implement the n is to one communication. So consider I'm writing element one, element two, rather than element, I'm going to write as a UI one, that is the user interface, first user interface, UI two. And I'm going to add one more user interface. First of all, I'm going to modify the event configure to that one. So I'm going to select that to NQ element 2. And now I can copy the another producer loop, which contains the event structure. So in each of the loops, I can trigger the event and then send the data through to the same queue. And uh, you have to understand that queues are n to one communication mechanism. It can support n number of writers, but it can have only one reader. So if I can run this code, okay. So let's configure the front panel. I'm going to change that to loop one. I believe that is the second loop, okay? So I'm going to change that to loop two. And I believe there is a loop three down there, yeah. So change that to loop three. So let's arrange them all nicely close to each other. So now if I run it, whenever I trigger loop one, it should write the data called UI string into the queue. That means I'm able to read it. Similarly for loop two and loop three, and so on. So let me show you in the highlight execution mode so we can actually see what is actually going on. The advantage of using the queues is because it is a asynchronous communication method. That means it's not going to run continuously. So the code will run only when the event has been triggered and the data is written in the queue. If there is no data in the queue buffer, the reader will not work. 
So now if I trigger the loop 3, the third loop will execute and the data will be written into the memory. And this is how you can effectively implement the queues in LabVIEW. Please like, share and comment this video. For further